Mark, so many businesses are talking about AI at the moment. What do you mean when you talk about it? Artificial intelligence is a, um, it's a big term, isn't it? And we use it here as a bit of a general catch-all for a range of things. So not just what the, the engineers might think of artificial intelligence, but a range of technologies which help us do our job better, faster, more efficiently uh, for our clients. And can you give me some example applications? Yeah, some examples where we're experimenting and using AI include uh, due diligence on commercial transactions, being able to look at the documents, advise the clients on what it is they're buying or selling. Uh, discovery in cases where they might be trying to work out what they have to submit to the other side on a dispute. Document automation, which allows us to produce documents less manually and more efficiently and more uh, thoughtfully. And of course, uh, risk analyses that we, uh, we use the tools for. Is there a particular instance you can think of where AI could really transform the business? There is a serious transformation opportunity here. And a good way to think about it is a traditional due diligence and an AI enhanced due diligence. A traditional due diligence, a client will deliver a whole pile of documents, usually on a, on a, a data room now, an e-data room, and we'll work our way through them. It'll take a certain amount of time and there'll be a level of insight, but also a level of human error in working through 1,000, 10,000, 20,000 documents. AI can do that faster and it, frankly it can cover the field more. Uh, and what that means for clients is, is that some of the risk that's associated with the due diligence is taken out through the process. Mark, is there a risk if you don't get this right, the client just looks elsewhere? There's a big risk that if we don't give clients what they want, they'll go elsewhere. Um, we've been responding to that risk for generations, so it's not new. What is new is that the technology piece of it is newer and it's happening faster and we need to be more responsive. The way in which we're trying to respond to that, and I think with a degree of effectiveness, is not just around picking this bit of technology or that bit of technology, but to wrap it in a culture of innovation, to be constantly asking ourselves, are we giving the clients what they want? Uh, the second piece of the jigsaw around that too is actually to adopt a slightly collaborative mode. I think maybe in the past law firms have tended to take problems away, wanted to make them perfect, take them back to the client and present them. Um, it's too slow. It's, it's way too slow in today's world. The client's moved on to the next thing. Um, they're going somewhere else to get what they need. So not only do we need to be innovative, we need to be collaborative in a way which is different to the past. Can you talk a little bit about collaborating with suppliers? A really good way to think about that is a piece of work we've done in anti-money laundering recently. So we used a commercial supplier to give us the, if you like, the, the app, uh, the framework that we could hang the content off and we designed the content on it hung it on to the app and then we can uh, supply that to clients. And that's been actually pretty exciting. It's sort of, um, it's changed the way we do things. Instead of going through a kind of quite a manual checklist, the app allows the client to put the stuff, uh, the information into the, into the checklist and out pops either an answer, uh, literally an emoji with a thumbs up or an emoji with a thumbs down ring HSF. <laughs> and with all, with all of these changes and as you drive deeper into technology, is there anything, anything you have concerns about? Yeah, it is, diving into the unknowns always got some risk associated with it. I worry that we can't keep up with the pace of things. I worry that we mightn't pick client needs or in fact the vendors with their own agenda will, um, there'll be dissonance between what the vendors can supply and what the client needs. I also worry about the impact that it'll have on our people. There's some very positive impacts that can come from this, which is new opportunities, People can bring more of their skills to work. Um, they can get involved in a broader range of things at work. I mean, some of these uh, some of these technologies will mean that tasks previously done by people can be done by, but can be done by machines by a piece of technology. So I guess it falls to leaders like myself to be able to recalibrate the business to create new opportunities, new jobs for people, um, and achieve a good outcome. Mark, I suppose what clients want to hear is that um, you know, they can still trust you um, with, with the relationship and um, you've got their best interests at heart. And we, look, we never take client trust for granted and it's really important, particularly in a new area where st we're still getting into a rhythm ourselves. And one of the things that worries me about that is data protection. And you read all the stories about cyber security out in, the, um, out, out in the world that are going on at the moment. And if I was a client, I'd be thinking, well, I'd like to collaborate with you around artificial intelligence and all these wonderful opportunities, but is my information, is my data going to be protected? Is it going to be safe? Um, can I trust you? So I'm very, very aware of that. We have lots of people thinking about it, and we test ourselves, and we have backup plans and all of those things. 
I think we have to be realistic. Uh, we can do so much, so part of our response has to be trying to prevent that data being compromised, but also working out how to recover quickly if that data is, is, is attacked while in our possession. What would you say to colleagues who are a little bit worried about this pace of change? Yeah, well, um, I, I don't think it's something to be afraid of or worried about. It's something to understand and to come to grips with, and there'll always be change. Uh, I guess you can't, you can't change change. Uh, the change is coming. What you can do, though, is you can work at how you respond to it. And it's interesting if I look at some of the really high-performing people in our organisations, they are at the front of the queue when something new is coming. They are the ones that are going to the training. They are the ones that are reading the extra piece or just thinking about the issues. So I would say, you know, get organised and get to the front of the queue. And how soon does all this become a reality for the firm? <laughs> well, if I knew that, <laughs> that my job would be done. I think it'll be, it'll be within three to five years. I don't think it'll be within 12 to 18 months. Uh, nor do I think it's a 10-year uh, problem. One, one of the limiting factors on this, and I was on a panel on artificial intelligence with a US uh, university professor, there are some very complicated algorithms which sit below what we as lawyers see on the client sort of interface, and you can only go as fast as those algorithms are developed, and they get the, you know, the more complicated the product, the more complicated and bigger the, the motor you need to drive it. That actually might ultimately be the limiting factor. And with all that machinery going on un under the surface, I mean, do you, do you hope that that means there is scope for more human interaction with the client? Uh, I think it'll be different. Uh, it, you know, at the moment, a lot of what we do is across a broad range, and that range may narrow because technology can do part of the range, but there'll be other opportunities opened up at the other side. Uh, so to me, it's around where you aim, uh, where you point your people, and at the moment, we're pointing them across a particular range. Artificial intelligence will allow us to point them across a broader and different range, which is good for clients and good for the people. And it all seems like space age stuff. I mean, who'd have thought when you signed up for the law all those years ago that you'd be you'd become you're you're a technologist now? Yeah, well, no one taught me this stuff at law school. Let me tell you, it's completely different to the, when I started many many years ago. Um, when I started, you walked into the office and there was a pile of fax paper on your chair, and the young lawyers always laugh. But if you think about how far we've come and how quick uh, we can transmit information, how we can share information, it might be experimental, but it's coming and it's going to arrive. It's just a question of when and how it arrives. But, you know, it, it's exciting. It, it really is. I mean, I guess it's a wonderful opportunity to be living in a world where these sorts of things are within reach and not just sort of the stuff of, of, of TV series.